Hey everybody, Charles from HumbleMechanic.com back to talk about more failed Volkswagen parts. Today we're talking about the fuel pump control module on 2 liter turbos. So this is the magic little black box that controls the in-tank fuel pump on most 2 liter turbo engines. Pretty much going back to 2006. But before we get into the show, let's talk about the sponsor of the day, which is Deutsch Auto Parts. These guys are the Volkswagen Audi parts experts. Awesome service, great pricing, a ton of really good DIYs. They actually did a DIY on this part right here. I'll be sure to put a link in the show notes for you guys if you want to check that out. Also check them out at shopdap.com. So what is this little magic black box called the fuel pump control module. Well, this is the workhorse for the fuel pump. The engine computer sends signals to this module. This module interprets those signals, then sends them out to the in-tank fuel pump. If you wanna know how the in-tank fuel pump fails, I did a video on that, and I'll be sure to put a link so you can check that out as well. Now, like I said, this is the workhorse, so this is what actually does the turning on and turning off of the in-tank fuel pumps. The in-tank fuel pump is a pulse width modulated pump, which means that it's turned on and off really fast instead of being constantly on. And because this is a control module, there's probably a lot that goes on inside of this little box that we really don't know what's happening, but we can tell when they're failing. So how do these fuel pump control modules fail? Well, basically what happens is it stops sending power out to the fuel pump. And I think the biggest reason is that it overheats. You can see here, <laughs> I spent a lot of time trying to get this, all this stuff off of here so you can see the actual circuit board. But if you look right here, there's a spot that's really burnt. And this looks like it's a voltage regulator. You can see a few capacitors in here as well. But this is typically the point where you see a little bit of melting on the outside of the case. Also, when they fail and you reach underneath the back seat and pull it out, they're generally really hot to the touch. How do we know we may have a failing fuel pump control module? We can have a lot of symptoms and most are relating to drivability and starting issues. One, we can have a car that doesn't start. We can also have a check engine light on for anything fuel related. We can have a drivability concern of a stumble or a hesitation. And we can have a fuel gauge issue. As we learned, the fuel level sender is inside the pump. And since the pump plugs directly into this module, the wires for the level sender go through it as well. So we could potentially have an issue there, but I will tell you, I've never seen that happen before. Most common, you're gonna get either a no start a drivability concern, or a check engine light, or a combination of any of those three. How do we diagnose a fuel pump control module failure? Well, odds are, in most cases, you're going to get a fault. Now, it may be a low rail pressure, high rail pressure. It can be anything fuel pressure related, and that can lead us back to a failure of this control module. If we're concerned about low pressure, what we want to do is we want to pull up the back seat, and on the passenger side, we're going to find this module installed into the cover for the fuel pump. First thing I like to do is get my hand really close without touching it just to see how hot it is. If I can't feel the heat radiating off of it, then I'll go ahead and take it out, unclip it from the holder, and inspect it. And if it looks like there's a melt spot on it, I go ahead and replace it. You also want to make sure that you don't have a fuel pump issue causing a high current draw through the module, melting the module, and the pump is also an issue as well. And if you want to confirm that the module is the failure, remember you need power into it and power out of it. So is this a DIY part? Absolutely, this is a super easy DIY. Popping the back seat up is usually the trickiest part of the whole job. Or if the connector on the fuel pump is all dirty and nasty, that can be a little bit tricky too. But we've talked at length about how to disconnect these connectors properly. And with a little bit of finesse, that should be no problem. So there you have it. We have rounded home on pretty much all the fuel related issues on the 2.0T. I think the only thing we have left is a fuel injector, which I'm gonna try and get my hands on one and see if we can't do that for you. So I'm gonna wrap it up there. If you guys have any questions or comments posted in the comment section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at humblemechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and obviously here on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. I left my beer of the day slash drink of the day in the house. It's uh, a gin and tonic, I think. So no drink of the day, guys.